hey guys welcome back to my channel today we're going to do a very simple craft and this craft can be done using any kind of jars that you actually have laying around or you can go purchase some jars from the dollar tree so i purchased this one right here this is just a yellow jar it's not anything fancy or anything i guess it's like a vase so it does have a sticker on the bottom so you want to make sure you remove the sticker off before you start painting the jar which is what i'm going to do to it you can use chalk paint or if you want to use spray paint you can spray paint it as well but basically you're just going to paint the entire thing once you get the sticker completely off of course this one's going to be a pain in the booty to get the sticker off let me see if i can grab another one that's not so hard to get off okay so i've got another one here let's see if this one's a little bit easier to get off i do have some goo gone that i could use on it but kind of just hoping it comes off pretty easily right here so just pull the sticker off and then oh my gosh this one's gonna be a pain in the booty too all right i'm just gonna scrape it it's not that big of a deal because you're not really going to see the bottom of the actual vase or anything. So once you've got the sticker off and if you need to take and wipe it off with some Goo Gone or something, you can do that as well. Then you're just going to take some basic chalk paint if you want to use chalk paint, which is what I did on mine. So I'll show you the first one that I've got completely finished. This one here is completely finished and that is not actually the jar from the Dollar Tree. This is actually a jar. It's like a um, Starbucks drink. So that's what this one is so is this one this is a starbucks drink as well which i think is cool because then you can have different sizes of them so what i'm going to do is put my believe or whatever word i'm going to use on this side of it so you can't really see the starbucks logo on that one and then i have another one right here that i have finished this one says peace my words are a little bit crooked so to me it's not that big of a deal because i'm just going for something that looks country-ish and something i hand created so i like that I don't know if you can see the top of this one here or not but there's what it looks like completely finished right there hopefully you're able to see that one it's just got some cotton and a little sprig of some greenery in here so that way there it kind of decorates it up so i'm going to show you how i do this so basically you're going to paint it so i showed you the empty jar right here so then you're going to move on to the next step which will be a jar that looks like this because it's painted after that so once you've got it painted, you want to get let it dry for a long time. Make sure it's good and dry before you do the next step because you can actually remove some of the chalk paint if you're using chalk paint. If you're using regular spray paint, I'm not sure how that would work. Probably a lot better. My chalk paint, as you can tell, is a little bit chunky. It's some homemade chalk paint that I made. So I made this paint right here just because I go through chalk paint very quickly and I thought it would be easier for me to just have some chalk paint that I can make up very quickly. So that is homemade. So that's why mine looks a little bit different than what most people's probably look like. So what I'm planning to do is I've got believe and I've got peace. So I need one more word here to put in the front here. I'm thinking like joy or Noel. So all I did was go on lawn and search for some words that look like Ray Dunn. So these are Ray Dunn inspired. So I found a couple words, I printed them out, and then all you're going to have to do is cut them out. And you can do this either one of two ways. I will show you both ways to do it. I thought I had more words here, but evidently I don't. So now we're left with Mary, Noel, Joy, and Wish. I think Joy is what I want to use. So I'm just going to cut the word out right here. Super simple. Cut that out, and then you can do this one of two ways. In my opinion, it works both ways very well. So if you have your word cut out, all you need to do, let me move these out of the way so you can see a little bit better what I'm talking about here. All right, so all you're gonna need to do is take your word. Well, let me find some tools to use. Hang on one second. I have a tool here. <laughs> you're gonna be surprised what the tool is. It's a pencil. So this pencil is kind of dirty. I've dipped it into paint accidentally. So if you want to transfer this word onto here, you can either go get some carbon paper, which is what I prefer. I prefer using carbon paper. Or you can scribble on the back of your word here, like this with your pencil, just scribble over the entire back of it. And then after you've got it all scribbled in, you can take your, hang on, <laughs> scribble, scribble, scribble. So just get it nice and scribbled in so you've got your entire word covered. And then you can take and put that onto your project that you're doing and find your placement wherever you want to place it at. So I'll just say, for example, I want it right here. So I'm going to set it right there. Now you need to find like something that's going to kind of draw the letters. So what I've been using is I cut up a piece of bamboo skewer. So if you have some bamboo skewers, I have a ton of them. My husband bought a giant pack of them like after they went on sale. If you have some bamboo skewers, you can use those as your writing utensil. 
So all you're going to want to do is trace over top of the letters. And don't worry about being perfect. Like I said, this is a homemade craft in my opinion. The little imperfections is what makes it more personable. So just trace over your letters here using your scribbles from the back. And this should transfer to the front if you've done enough scribbles on it correctly. So then you're just going to trace, trace, trace. Okay, so now that you've got it traced, you should pull it off and you'll see where my J didn't come out quite as right, quite right. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. That wasn't very smart. So did you see what I did there? So that's no big deal though, because we're going to cover it. But you've got the basics of what you need here. So all you're going to want to do now is go ahead and get yourself. I have these right here. This is a Sharpie paint pen. These are amazing for crafting, in my opinion. They work so, so well. So all you're going to want to do is get your paint pen and go ahead and prime it up a little bit. Make sure that it's ready to go. And then you're just going to trace over your letters using your paint pen. And like I said, it's not going to be perfect. But honestly, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not looking for perfection. If you want to be more perfect with it, you can totally go slower and you can get it more perfected. So, okay, then you're just gonna trace over all of your letters here. My paint is a little bumpy too, which is messing me up. So if your paint were smoother, it, the pencil, I mean the marker would run along a lot smoother. Mine is a little bumpy because my chalk paint's starting to get yucky. I need to probably toss that batch out and make a new batch. I dug in a little too far there, but that's all right. We're not going to worry about it. All right. So there's Joy. So now we have Joy ready to go with our little collection as well. So all I, I need to do now is fill it. So for filler, you can go to the Dollar Tree and get yourself some greenery. They do have some picks at some of the Dollar Trees. My Dollar Tree, unfortunately, has zero picks. So what I have to do is improvise. So I purchased some picks from our local Lowe's, I think it was. These were $4.98. I do not recommend that you purchase them from there because this was not a good deal in my opinion. But I was in a pinch and I needed something quickly. So I just went and got those. So you can use either the whole piece to it if you want to use the whole piece like I did in this one. This is the bigger one. I don't think in the smaller one I need the whole piece. But I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and fill the bigger one up first and that way there maybe I can find a pick from the Dollar Tree for the small one. So what I'm going to do now is try to find out how tall I need to cut this. So you need to figure out your height for it. So what you want to do to find your height is take your product to the edge of the table and then scoot it down. I don't know if you're seeing what I'm doing here. Scoot it down so that you can see. Hang on. I'll try to show you. Scoot it down so you can see like how far you want it to go down into your jar. So about right here's where I want mine to go. So I need to cut off of that much. Do you see the, the amount hanging off the edge of the table? That's what I need to cut off of my actual pick here. So that's the amount that I'm going to cut off. Or you can bend it up. If you prefer to bend it up, you can do that as well. So I'm just going to put you guys back over here. All right. So now what I'm going to do is find my little spot here. I'm just going to put my finger on it so I know where I want to cut it. And then I'm going to go in with a good pair of cutters. These are like really, really good. So just keep your fingers out of the way because they're very, very sharp. So all you do is cut that and then I can place this down inside of here now. So I've got the length where I wanted it, which is perfect. So the one thing is if I would have cut it, I won't have to worry about like it moving around. But since I did, I mean, if I didn't cut it, and if I would have bent it, it wouldn't move around. But since I did cut it, I'm going to use a little piece of styrofoam. Let me go find my styrofoam. You guys are going to get to see my paint pants here. I think I have some styrofoam somewhere laying around somewhere. I don't know where. This My craft room is a giant mess. I don't know about you guys, but when you craft, I feel like your room gets to be a giant mess very quickly. So, okay, I don't see a piece of styrofoam laying around, but I do have a new block of styrofoam right here. So what I'm going to do is cut a little piece to go down inside of that right there and to cut your styrofoam I highly recommend that you guys go get to the Dollar Tree and look at their kitchen knives get one of their serrated knives they work so well for cutting styrofoam so what I'm going to do now is try to figure out how big a piece of I need whoops got a little piece hanging off here so I need something about right there right there I think so let's just cut that amount off right here 
This works so good for cutting though. I highly recommend that you get this because it just works really well. Now I need to cut it right here, right there. So I'm gonna cut it again. And these, like I said, you can get those at the Dollar Tree and they're a whole buck, so how do you beat that? And I'm just gonna push this down into there so it's nice and secure so my pick does not wiggle or wobble around. And it might be messy looking here, but honestly, I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't bother me. I'm not the world's cleanest crafter. I'm the world's let's get it done crafter. <laughs> okay, so now that I've got that in there, now I'm just gonna take my pick and put it down into there. Now it's not going to move. So if I wanna cover up this bottom part right here, all you have to do to cover this up right here is to fill it in with other things. Plus you can fluff this out. So you got your pick in here now. Hopefully you're able to see it. <laughs> Let me see if I can lift you up a little bit. There we go. All right, so you've got your pick in here so you can start fluffing it out a little bit and this will give it some more oomph to it. But you can also add more pieces to it if you want to. So that'll work as well. I think I'm gonna cut this just a little bit shorter to get it to go down in there a little bit further. So I'm just gonna cut off about right there. These things are so sharp. Okay, now I've got it. All right, it goes down a little bit better in my opinion. I wanted it a little bit closer. So now that works. So the next thing I have is this right here. This is just a little pick that I got from the Dollar Tree. It's just a little cotton pick. And this is gonna fit perfectly in there in my opinion. So we'll see how it works when I put it in. Oh yeah, perfect. So that meshed up with that. It's already starting to cover that greenery up right there. So the next thing is your ribbon here. So once you've got this done, this one here I bent the actual pro the plant, um, pick. I prefer that method over the method I just did here. So you can do either way if you either way you choose to. I prefer to do it bent because now I'm gonna have to figure out how to cover that greenery up. So I'm gonna have to work around trying to cover that up. Not that big of a deal, but just keep that in mind. If you bend the pick, then it stays. It doesn't wiggle and wobble. So that's what I should have done with this one too. So I should have kind of goofed. Either way, it's no big deal. All right, so now we need to do our ribbon. So let me go get some tools. Okay guys, so I got the tools that I need, which was a, a hot gun or a glue gun, hot gun, a glue gun. I got my little board here. The board that I use is basically a piece of board that you get at Lowe's, it's like a sample. I use that to keep my hot gun on, it works just fine. So something else that you could use to use as filler. I have this little garland right here. This is just a cheap garland, but I like to cut pieces off of this occasionally when I need it for different things. And it works great because it's got a nice stiffness to it so you can bend it and flex it in any way that you need to. So if you wanna add some more pieces to this little stem right here, which is what I did to my first one, you can do that as well. So I'm just going to take this little garland here and cut some pieces off. So very easily, these come off super, super easy. So you can do that, or you can go to the Dollar Tree and they do have the pack of like individual garland pieces. You can get that as well. So either one would work. And then all you're gonna do is just put a little hot glue onto it and then find a place to put it and hold it for a second or two and let it dry just for a little bit. And that probably is what I'm gonna do to fill in the bottom of this one as well. Just put some more of that greenery around in there. Now let's go ahead and move on to the ribbon because I'll probably just fill that in a little bit more later. What did I do with the ribbon? Oh my gosh, here it is. <laughs> so the ribbon I'm using is also from the Dollar Tree. This one here is the Buffalo Chuck with snowflakes on it. So what I did with this one is I just put the ribbon around. This is just the easy way that I find to do ribbon. I take the ribbon and I measure around how far I need. And then, hang on, <laughs> helps if you get it where you want it first. Well, this one's a different shape, so that's the other problem. So I have to go down a little bit further for this one. So I'm gonna go down to about right there for this one. So the shape, because it's kind of bowed out right on the edges here, it's harder for it to tuck up under there. So I'm just gonna set it right here. And then all you do is find out where, it's, where you need to cut it and we will cut it. Grab my handy dandy scissors here. So I'm just gonna cut it right there. It's not, does not have to be perfect or anything, believe me, because you're gonna cover it up anyway. So now all you're gonna do is take it back to the front of your vase. So it's facing the, sign, the side that it has the sign. And you're gonna put a little hot glue in that spot right there. And then you're gonna take your ribbon and press it down. 
And then do the same thing on the other side. Take this ribbon and put a little hot glue right here and pull it tight. And there you go. When you're touching your hot glue, remember it is very, very hot. So just be careful, do not burn yourself. All right, so that part's, that part's done. I'm knocking things over here. Oh my goodness, losing my pieces. Okay, so now that part's done. So the next part is to make the bow. This is my easy way of doing it. I think it just works so much better. So all you're gonna wanna do it when you're making a bow for it is you're gonna find your ribbon and, or you're not gonna find your ribbon, you're gonna take your ribbon and make a little circle out of it first. So there's your little circle. Then you're gonna take it and pinch it right here. So pinch it like that. Hopefully you're able to see what I'm doing. My hands are so big, I have man hands. So then you're gonna take your ribbon and you're gonna twist it around and you're gonna create like a little bow there. Hopefully you're able to see what I'm doing. Make a little bow there. And then once you get to the other side, you're gonna twist again. Twist and then there. So you're just going out a little bit further each time. Don't worry about it being perfect because we're gonna pinch it all together here in a second anyway. Just try to get it as good as you possibly can. And then twist and do the same thing here. So we're going out three. We have three little strands there. So if you, I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's three little ribbons almost. So up to the other side and we've got our third one here. So now that we've got three, then you're gonna take what I like to do is take and just leave myself a little bit extra and then I'm just gonna cut that right there like that. So hopefully you can see, I've got a little bit right here. I'm gonna cut it just like that. So I'm just gonna leave it long and cut it. And then pick it back up and put it right there with that. So I don't know if you can see, but I've gone, almost created like a little loop here. And then we've got the bows here. Now we're gonna take a little piece of twine. So I'm just gonna grab a little piece of twine here. I've got my roll of twine. This is just the little roll of twine. You can get twine at the Dollar Tree as well. I'm gonna cut a little piece of that off. And then I'm going to take the twine and I'm gonna go through here. And I'm gonna tie everything nice and tight. So here's where you're gonna have to like try to make it as tight as you possibly can. And it's gonna be really hard to see this. I do apologize, but it's a really small bow. I'll have to show you guys this on a bigger scale one time because with a small bow, it's really hard to see. Okay. I've got a mess here going on. I've got a mess. Oh no, my bow just came completely apart. Hang on, I'm gonna work on my bow again and I'll come right back. Okay, now I've got the bow semi done. So as you can tell, mine is not perfect. <laughs> like I said though, I'm not a perfect crafter. I'm just somebody who likes to craft basically. So I'm just gonna kind of twist it around a little bit here and then I've got the twine in the middle. I'm gonna cut off that extra piece of twine to get rid of that. So I'm just gonna take and snip this off and snip it off here. My scissors are getting dull. All right, and then I'm gonna take the extra loop that I had made on it. So I'm gonna take that extra loop and I'm gonna cut that into half. So I'm just gonna pull and cut it into half. And so now we've got little tails here. Do you see how we created like a little tail into the ribbon? So that turned out great. So now what I wanna do is, my tails are backwards though, <laughs> oh well. So now what you wanna do is you wanna cut a little dovetail into it. So you just fold your ribbon in half and then cut down and that creates a little dovetail. It's not perfect, but again, I don't care. All right, so I'm gonna cut another little dovetail here. So we've got two little dovetails, just makes the bow look a little bit more fancier. And then what you wanna do in order to cover up that burlap that you put on there, you don't really want that showing through. You're gonna take your ribbon and you're gonna cut a little piece off of it. And then you're gonna take and put a little hot glue right in the center of that little ribbon that you just cut. And then you're gonna take that and you're gonna put it right over the top of your burlap. So you're gonna cover that burlap up and then you're gonna take it around to the back as well. So put a little glue on your burlap behind and then pull the ribbon all the way tight so that it 
covers up as much as you can you don't really have to cover the back as well as you do with the front the front's where you really want it to be covered you're not really going to see the back of the bow so once you have it done it should look like that so there's how your ribbon should look and i had my bow backwards earlier so that's why it looked like my these pieces were wrong but the bow should look like that and you can kind of fluff it out if you want to create a little fluff on the little bow i'm good with it just like that so now I'm going to take and put a little hot glue on the back of my bow again. I'm going to put a little hot glue right here. And I'm just going to put that right into the center of my thing right here. If you're good at tying bows, you don't have to go through all this effort. You could probably do it a lot easier than the way I do it. I'm just not good at tying bows. So that's the way I prefer to do it because it does work every time. So And it looks like it's all the way wrapped around and tied into a nice pretty little three part bow so I think I just think it turns out really pretty so once I get some more green for greenery for this one I'll have a set of three of these to sit on my mantle so this one here needs to be fixed my cotton balls or cotton stems are coming out so once you that one is really sticking out far here I'm gonna push it up in there there we go okay so once you get them all done, you'll have like a little trio you can set on your mantle. And I just think it looks really cute. So you'll have to let me know what you think of it. Let me see if I can get you guys a good view of it. So here's what it looks like finished. There's how they are. That's how tall they are. I'm not exactly sure how tall it is to begin. I mean, after it's finished. I think I might just put some red berries in here. Hang on. Let me. I have some red berries. Let's see how that looks with just red berries because that might be a little bit different. Hang on. Yes, I've got just a sprig of red berries. There's a lot of red berries on here, so I probably would trim it down some because there's quite a few on there. But just to see how it's gonna look. So this branch right here is sticking out really far. Okay, so actually I kind of like the red berries, just the red berries in that one, and I'm gonna put the ribbon around that one as well. What do you guys think? Do you think it looks good with just the red berries? I think it looks pretty cool ignore my messy table I have been crafting all evening so I think they turned out good you have to let me know they are Ray Dunn inspired and like I said you can use these are Starbucks drink cup drink drinks that you can buy so basically these were free and then you're just gonna cost the only cost is gonna be your supplies as far as like if you have paint and then your fillers so but if you already have paint and you already have fillers on hand this can be a very inexpensive project and I think it looks really cute and like I said I think it's going to look really cute sitting on the mantle and it looks very right on inspired so it's going to be a perfect country farmhouse themed type of Christmas decor so let me know your thoughts your opinions I would love to hear I hope you guys enjoyed today's crazy video <laughs> Let me know what kind of crafting you want to see next. I have tons of things that I'm working on. I'll show you guys a sneak peek at a cloche that I finished. So you guys may have seen this one right here that I did the other day. This is just a little piece of art that I actually painted that little piece of art. So I was inspired by the piece of art to make a cloche to go along with it. So I made this little cloche here. It does have the little blue truck in here. The little blue truck I actually painted. And then it says fresh cut trees and then it's got little trees in it and it does have snow in here so you can actually shake this around it's got a little bit of snow it's kind of like a shaker they sell these little cloches at the dollar tree as well so if you guys want to see a demo on how i made this let me know but that is everything for today i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you so much for watching and until next time i'll catch you guys later